Hey guys, welcome back. So Panzer Platform reached out to me and asked me to join in on a collaboration for battery testers. And so here I am. I have two flavors of battery tester. Three if you count the fact that I also have this in a combination scan tool battery tester. But for this video we're just going to be looking at these two. So this is the old school battery tester here, the analog, and obviously the new school digital. Before I ever had either one of these tools, typically what I just did was hooked up a multimeter, checked the voltage, if it was you know, 11 or 12, but then the battery was probably good, maybe it needed a charge or whatever, charge it up, see if it would hold the charge. If it was 10, or eight or six typically that meant you know cells were dead they're, they're two volt cells give or take so you figure you got roughly six cells for 12 volts if you're getting 10 volts you typically have one bad cell and you can tell because you'll charge it up it'll go to 12 and then as soon as you pull the charger off it drops rapidly and then settles in the 10 range if you have more than one dead cell, then obviously it'll drop down two volts for each dead cell and, and then level out there. But these gadgets also give you a little bit of uh, more information than what just a multimeter will give you. Two dead batteries here. This was off of my 2010 P7B. And this one I believe was off of my mother-in-law's pickup truck. And this one is in really bad shape. So it's showing 4 volts right now. I think it's got a bunch of dead cells. Uh, this particular battery tester, I got it at Walmart. It's not the uh, Harbor Freight one that Chuck was suggesting we all get. But since I already had this one, it is what it is. And it's probably going to smoke when I hit this. This is the load test. And what it does is it puts a load on the battery, and you see it's drained it already one whole volt. It may be so dead it may not even power this. Yeah. Let's go over here. I think this one has just got one dead cell. It at least powers it up. We go. It's a car battery. It's another vehicle. It's a regular flooded. Cold cranking amps. It is rated. I think it's 650. No, 750. So. Seven fifty. So state of health is zero. It's got ten volts, five cold cranking amps. Suggests that we charge and retest. I can tell you if we charge it, it's gonna drop back down to ten volts fairly quick because it has a bad cell in it. So you see the one advantage to having the analog one is you can hook it up to even a really dead battery, whereas the digital one, there's not even enough power to turn it on. I'll show you what this will do. So you see it's showing about 11. Put a load on it. it. Drops it down to 9 and then it starts to recover again. So that's pretty much it. The analog doesn't have a lot of features to it, but it gives you instant feedback on a lot of things. Having that dial there, you, you can know instantly what the voltage is doing, whereas the digital one just gives you a snapshot. Now I hooked up the big dog there. It's on the jump start mode. You see it's pushing 
13.65 volts through it right now and you're also seeing how I typically would check a battery just using a multimeter so we'll see if I uh, run this for a while if it does anything at all for the battery my experience has been when you have a dead battery you have a dead battery I know there's videos out there where folks do all sorts of things like dumping the acid out, washing them with a baking soda and a water solution, rinsing them out, and then replacing the acid. I've seen people put Epsom salts and distilled water, citric acid and distilled water, charging them with the 200 amp jump start for 15 minutes and then resting it for an hour and then 15 minutes of charge and so forth. I've tried all of that and none of it has worked for me, not at all. It's just been a waste of time and obviously potentially dangerous when you're talking about dumping the battery acid and so forth. So unfortunately my experience has been when the battery is dead, go to the Walmart or wherever you get your batteries at and just get a new one and move on. When I disconnect the jump start you see it drops down those dead cells just can't help themselves so this one probably has two dead cells be my guess the way it's sort of stabilizing at nine And now I've got the jump starter 200 amps on this battery, which was a little bit healthier. We'll see if we get anywhere doing this. On vehicle purposes, I would say you probably don't want to push that with it connected to the car. <laughs> I don't know that 100%, but I just think that's a risky proposition. So this is where the analog one on vehicle probably isn't as helpful as having the digital one that can do the different tests. This is just basically showing that I'm somewhere in the 1,800, 600, 400, or 200 cold cranking amps and over 12 volts, not quite 13 volts. I have what you call a good battery and then obviously I could start the car and with the alternator on it's going to kick over here and I, I can tell you just from experience it's going to be in the green my alternator is good and I have a voltmeter on all the time that tells me what the charge is doing when the car is running when it's parked and stuff so anyway like I said I don't think it would be wise to push that while it's hooked up to the actual car. So on car is going to be where the Conway really shines. You've seen me do this before. But you've got these different tests that you can do. And I'll be honest, I don't know what the cold cranking amps are. The battery's in the trunk and I don't feel like digging through there to find it. So we'll just go with 750. So, as I kind of suspected, the battery's health is lower than I'd like it to be. Um, I haven't had any problems per se with it. I just, I don't drive this car much, and so it sits on a battery charger all the time. And I've noticed that the voltage has been running just a hair lower at 12.4. But the battery's still starting the car every time, so I'm going to keep driving it until it needs a jump start and then I'll replace the battery. Alright, it's been on the charger for a while. I'm going to plug it and watch the voltage. It should drop down and stabilize around 10. If it stops in the 12s then I actually still have a decent battery. Uh, it had died on me. <laughs> It left me where I needed to jump start it, so I assumed it was dead. It had like a 10 volt reading at the time. 
And now, of course, just to prove me wrong, it's going to hold out at 12.8 and be a good battery. <laughs> so, oh well, I'd rather it be a good battery that I can still use than uh, have another dead battery just sitting here. Anyway, I look forward to seeing the other collaborators' videos. I know this can be sort of a boring topic. Uh, slightly less boring than watching a battery charge but uh, you know I'm sure that Chuck if nobody else is gonna have some really interesting uses for these battery testers and probably teach us all a couple things so looking forward to that and I'll see you in the next video